Hello my friends, John LaRuffy here with another Straight Up Solo. In this episode, we're going to take a look at Sabika. I'm going to show you how this Euro game plays from a solo standpoint. We'll go through a couple turns and then I will tell you my thoughts and help you hopefully decide if this is something that you'd like in your solo collection or something you want to pass on. Alright, let's get started. Okay folks, and as usual, please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't done so already. And if you have, thank you very much for the support. I appreciate it. So as you can see, this is a gigantic board. Gigantic board indeed. The Rondell takes center stage, right? And there's three of them. The center, the middle, and the outer. And that is what the action selection is going to be based upon. You're always going in this clockwise motion. And you get to take two moves for free, i.e. like one, two, and then you have to pay one uh, denare for every other dinar for every other space you want to go, you have to pay an extra. If you get, if you try to land in a space where there already is a person, you have to pay one per person that's already there. So the rondel in this game is just tight enough to make that be a difference because um, money is very tight, and so you really have to consider that. You know, you don't want to spend too much time in this game trying to just get money. You need to get it along with everything else, I think, to be competitive. So you got to be very careful and frugal about how you take your turns and which action you take them. Now, when you're playing the solo mode, there is the Automa here, which plays as a fully functional player. The Automa, in my case, is the yellow. And the yellow will move around based on these three decks of cards and based on these four tiles, which you shuffle up in the middle of each round. And those tiles then... Um, you know, dictate what you're going to do as far as which card you're going to draw. The cards say exactly what to do. So, for example, this card right here says that you're going to take the mid, the uh, worker off the center. You're going to move him to the bottom space. You're going to get this many points. You're going to take this action. You always ignore where you actually go. Sometimes it matches this, sometimes it doesn't, but you always do what the card says. You always take the points or the pariah or whatever else it ends up being. So the nice thing about the AI is it is quite easy to actually execute. If you look at this, this tells you exactly how to do every one of his actions in plain English with a difficult to read font, but that's a different story. Um, in plain English, which is nice, or Spanish, I guess, if you uh, are more comfortable that way. And that's very helpful because this game is a very uh, brainy, difficult to um, waste thought in game. You really have to be paying attention and you have to really focus on what you're doing. So I love the fact, and I'm telling you this right now, that the AI is easy to control in that regard. <clears throat> so you basically... Flip a tile over, move it to where it says, do exactly what it says in the card. If it has an action, you follow these this little three or four sentences to the T. That's it, which is very, very nice. All right, now what am I doing in this game? Well, the theme of the game is you're supposed to be building back up Alhambra, um, or maybe it's the Sabika inside of Alhambra, the city itself you're building. I'm sorry if I'm flipping, flopping that. I'm not meaning to. And how are you doing that? Well, you are creating a major construction or a minor construction. The majors are up here, and they uh, basically will allow you to take bonus actions and move up on this little track over here, which helps you get more stuff, smaller bonuses. But the biggest deal is it helps you do a bonus action, and it will fulfill, if you're paying attention to the conditions, one of the vizier's specific conditions to score points. The more resources you put in, or materials, I should say, you put in to the um, building of it, the more points you get. And the points are over here, one, two, three, and four, for the different materials that you can use. There is a requirement for like a base material, but then you can add in additional materials to score more points. And the big deal here is that the materials always have to be different. So you can't just like hog one type and just put in a bunch. You have to mix it up. The minor constructions are similar in nature of materials. They, they don't require quite as much. And what you're trying to do is this little mini game here where you're trying to match up 
for instance, like this, green to green. If you make a match like this, you'll get to take a special architectural balance action, which is indicated on this little balance card that you have over here. And so that helps you get more points, okay? Poems. Poems are probably, in my opinion, the coolest thing about this game because poems are all of these unique cards that either give you an all, um, a kind of an all-game bonus or a one-time instant bonus. And how these come out and what they show is very unique in the fact that it really helps you to put together a solid strategy around that and save you some, you know, points or some... Um, effort or money or whatever it just really enhances the game as far as the long-term ones for instance i've got this one right here that lets me pay one fewer coin every time i do the export action which is helpful to get at the beginning of the game i had this one where i was short on money and needed some of these pariah points so i bought the, got this one it gave me an instant effect there and sometimes these poems will count for some of the categories that the vizier is looking for to score points at the end <clears throat> so that's pretty cool then you have these, which are the major poems. So those are the minor ones. They have the major ones that are basically like big end game scoring things where you can focus your strategy based on these to score a ton of points. And so in that regard, this game is quite strategic in the fact that you can see how to score major points here, major points there in the Vizier track and kind of hem in your strategy based on what you see in the beginning. It's not necessarily a point salad, although there are point there are parts of that where you can feel like that. It's it is not like that in the regard that everything gives you a little amount of points, not really. And it's also key that you focus on these things to score big. Now down here, you're basically moving these ships to different oops <clears throat> to different um, cities, and when you get there, you'll originally get a one-time bonus when you get in plus you can do an export action the export action will gain you some money it also gain you some uh pariah points and the pariah points you have to spend at the every, every round otherwise you basically lose points you get penalized the um neat thing about this is the what you have to do is you have to get raw materials from this board or from the the rondelle then you have to refine them into the goods that you want to trade. And then when you trade them, that's how you get the one point and the one pariah point. But if you trade them in a city that has the matching type of good, you get an additional one point and one pariah. So there's a strategy in an order of operations of trying to get the stuff you want, um, refine it, which puts it into your trade or into your storehouses, and then trade it ultimately. In addition to that, <clears throat> there's points at the end of the game based on your specific situation out here there's eight different scoring cards you play with one of them in the game and so that incentivizes you to do this plus there's some some vizier's favors for instance i have this one over here way over here which says for every presence i have i score one point at the at, there's three rounds basically you score those so that is the overview of what you're doing and basically that's kind of it. Now, let me show you a few turns so that you can understand it, because I think um, seeing is, is, is understanding in this game. All right, so the first thing is I happen to be first player because I'm leading on the pariah track. So I'll take the first action. Now, I can do whatever I'd like. I can move any of my four workers around the rondelle and take the action, okay? So the actions that are available to me in the inner ring, they're about poems. They're about activating your instant benefit on the poem again and about making money. <clears throat> also, if you go to any of these spots where there's a material available um, or a raw material, then you can get those and sometimes they're free, sometimes they cost a little bit of money, but you'll use those later on to do various things. So for instance, I'm tempted, especially since I don't need money and having no money is a bad place because if you can't make a legal move out here, you actually have to take one of your workers back, put it down here and you lose a point well, you do get three bucks and that's what you, you just don't want to do that that's bad news so i'm going to start off right now by moving this this person right here because i can move one two for free i lay it down and then i get three coins plus one coin for each poem i have well i have one two three poems so that's going to be <clears throat> excuse me six coins which is really good news because i was out of gas then i also get to take this uh marble i believe so i'm going to put it in my storehouse <clears throat> And it cost me one coin to do that. So that's the end of my turn. Now I go to him. 
he flipped over the builder tile. So we're going to flip a builder card. I think it's the builder. No, master builder, yep. So he's going to take his nearest master builder. It happens to be he already has one there. So he's going to lay it down. He's going to discard this out. And I'm just, so you can see, he discards that out. He goes to that top spot. He's going to get four points at the bottom, and he's going to do a master builder action. So let's give him the four points. One, two, three, four. And then the master builder action is going to say he's going to build, in this case, the highest number of the major construction tile from the era that matches where we are. We're in era two, so none of these are available anymore over here. We're actually over here. <clears throat> so in this, and by the way, I'm in round four. I started round four of five rounds. I want to make that clear. Sorry about that. So he's going to take the last one, which is unfortunate. So I don't even get an opportunity to get on that. So I'm going to figure something out. And so you can see he's built three of these windows now. And that's going to help him score at the end of the game and score when we score these. So he's been getting some good points off that. He also moves up on that track. All right, and then his turn is done. Goes back to me. Now I've got a couple things I could do. Number one, I need to consolidate this trade action because that is going to help me get bonus actions as well, one of which is the merchant, which could help. Uh, but the other thing that I'd like to do, if at all possible, is refine these goods because I need to do some more exporting. The, the trade uh, bonus is to be present in the cities that have the sugar. And when I'm in those cities, to be um, consolidated gets me extra points. All right, and consolidated means I move my person from the left side to the right side in a special action. So what I think I'm going to do <clears throat> is I am going to, yeah, I, th this is what I'm going to do. All right, so I'm going to move this person here, lay it down. It doesn't cost me anything. I am going to get this good for free. It's not a, yeah, it's a raw material, pardon me. I did find that these are a little bit confusing in the way we've got You've got materials, which are building materials. You've got raw materials. When you refine them, they go into goods. I don't know why I'm finding that a little bit confusing, but it just is for me. So um, it doesn't really matter because it's all descriptive uh, or iconic, pardon me, in the game. So you don't really have to worry about those. So now I've gone here. I'm going to consolidate either this one or this one. Now this one will help me for the income at the end of the round, which is not bad. But this one I want to do because I really want to get more, more materials and I can buy them and I've got some money. So I'm going to consolidate this one. And in doing so, there is nobody there, so I don't have to pay any penalty for that. Well, they don't get any points for that. But it allows me to take an instant market action. And this market action is where I get $2 and then I take two of these specific exchanges. So I'm going to take $2, or two dinar, pardon me. <clears throat> and then... I can do some buying and selling of goods or buying and sell. I'm sorry, buying and selling of goods or raw materials or buying and selling of materials. And if you buy raw materials, you must buy them from here. But I've got one of each, so there's nothing that I can do there. I'm not going to do it. Um, what I do need is more construction materials, and I need the simpler ones. The stuff that's going to help me I look and I see if I want to build, so we already know that he built the three of those that go to the point. So I'm probably not going to build another one of those. Maybe I will, but I really could use more materials that help me out here. So I could use some wood. Um, I could use some um, sandstone, not sandstone, it's uh, gypsum. So why don't I do that? I'm going to spend $2 to buy a wood and a gypsum. And I'm going to use that later to score some points. I can put it on my resource or my my um, <clears throat> storehouses. The storehouses or the warehouses, um, basically, once you put a good in there, it has to stay. But you can mix and match and do whatever you want. The reason they make it that way is for some cases where you are uh, doing certain things in different areas. They don't want you to be able to kind of like play things around. And I know it's. I kind of understood. I looked at Board Game Geek to try to figure that out um, of where that could happen. But basically what ends up happening is once you put it down, it has to stay there. You can mix and match the goods. You can even mix and match these if you want, as long as you have space. But once it's there, it needs to stay. And when you upgrade the warehouse, you can upgrade and put your goods into the warehouse as you upgrade it. So it's not really that constrained, but there are some fringe cases they wanted to, to deal with. Anyway, 
So I did that. I did my two, um, my two uh, market actions and I'm done. So let's flip over this guy. All right, now we're in the middle. This is the merchant. So my merchant says, go to that space, get one point, but no action. And a lot of times that happens. So he's going to take his merchant right here. He's going to go to the top, uh, sorry, this space right here, lay down, discard this, and take one point, and that's it, no action. Now what's good is, as he clears these up, these spaces give me the opportunity to refine my materials, which is good because I need to do that in order to, to, to trade them. But one thing you'll see is with these rondelles, you only have one person in the center and one person on the outside and two in the, uh, two in the middle, or sorry, one in the middle and two in the outside. So when you make a decision, for instance, when I make the decision to do that consolidation of trade, that is the only consolidation of trade I'm gonna be able to do this round unless I get some kind of bonus that helps me out. I also am not gonna be able to do an export this round, and I'm not gonna be able to refine some goods in my cities, or my my, um, my area. So there is um, there are some serious choices that you have to make because even though you have five workers, you only have a couple of workers per ring, well, one, one, and two. And so that puts a little bit of angst and some thought on, do I really wanna do this? Is it really gonna be worth it or do I really need to do something else differently, which is something that I, I, I enjoy. So anyway, let's continue on. Sorry, I'm, I'm waxing uh, theoretical here a little bit. I want to build, and I want to build a minor because, <clears throat> a minor um, building, because I want to continue to gain points for the end of the game. Plus I'd like to create that synergy that we're dealing with here. So I have a blue and I have an orange. The oranges are, for the most part, the same. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this orange window in the hopes to, to put this one in next to it. And these are fairly well balanced as it is right now, just by the luck of the draw. Both these categories happen to be ones that I need to build. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that action. And to do that, I need to move one of my guys to a spot that allows me to do the building. And I think I have to move always i don't think i can stand in a spot and i want to be really clear about that because i am standing in a spot that i'd like but it says move your chosen worker yeah so you have to move it you can't just stop there um and you also are never allowed i'm not allowed to move this guy here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to wait on this building action and instead um i really don't want to go back to the market so that would be one, two, three, four. That'd be very expensive. It costs me all my money to do that double build. Oh, that's unfortunate. And I guess I could go here and pick up some more materials. That would also let me do some refining. So let's do that. I move one. I pay the one <clears throat> because he is present. I get to pick up three materials. It can be um, the, um, the, whatever that is, porcelain, granite. I can't remember. And... Um, or I'm sorry, that's got to be marble and the, the gypsum. So, not the gypsum, the wood. So I've got room for wood in here. I've got room for gypsum here. Sorry, gypsum, I keep saying marble here. That's three. And then I'm going to put one more marble in here, and that's going to fill me up pretty darn full. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, that's what I'm going to do there. Then I'm going to spend one to take that secondary action and refine, um, probably going to refine the pot here, or make the pot, or put the pottery, but the, oh, I just see, so this is where you can get in trouble, because if I was to do that, I'd have to spot, have a space in my warehouse. I clearly do not have a space for that in my warehouse, so I guess I will not be doing that right now, because I'm full, everything is full up. So that's it. All right, enough agony on that one. So we flip over here. We flip the inner ring card for the person and he's going to just take the point, no action, and discard anything that would be there. So Yusuf, the Automa, in this game, that's his name, <clears throat> goes around, goes here, that's it, gets a point. You can see he's beating me a bit, <laughs> that's for sure. Okay, now it comes to me and I want to do that building action so I can clear out some of this stuff. And I'm gonna build as much as I can here 
and I said I'm going to build um, this one. No, uh, this, yeah, it doesn't matter because they are literally the same just about. So I'll go ahead and I'll build this orange one. The orange one must take one of the marble. And then I can add two more things to it that are different. So I'm going to add this gypsum and this wood. So that's three, two, one, that's six points. So we'll get six. And then because I completed this with the orange, I can get $4 or one pariah. I'm going to get the one pariah because I'm low on that. I'm going to owe five at the end. So if I didn't do that, I was going to lose points. So that'll help me out. Okay, now back to him, his final turn. He is going to take the final turn with his last remaining master builder. In this case, it says move to the spot he's already in. So he just lays down. He gets two pariah points, and then he will take the upgrade the warehouse action, where he literally just takes this warehouse, which everyone has the most um, boxes in it. This one, they're tied, so it doesn't matter. Okay, so he takes that, and that is it. Now... He also scored, oh, I gave him that, he gave him two prior. So then we have all finished, so the round is over, and so now we go to the steps which have to do with the um, maintenance phase. So the first thing we do is get income. He does not get any income, I get two prior points, one, two, and that's it, so the income comes in the blue only. Then we move this up to this spot right here. If I was playing the advanced mode, it would activate an event, but I'm not playing the advanced mode at this time. The events can be good or bad, so you can make it difficult or easy, depending on how you mix and match your events. <clears throat> so then we have to pay the pariah points. In this case, it's five. One, two, three, four, five. He can only pay two, so he loses three points. One, two, three. Then we stand up all of our workers. Oops like so. Then all the gold workers move one space in a clockwise fashion. All right. Finally, we add back. The rules are kind of silly. They say replenish. I shouldn't say silly, but it was confusing. They say replenish. Well, you don't discard anything. All you do is replenish any of the spots that had openings on them, okay? So that keeps some of the maintenance down, which is kind of nice, actually. Then have to shuffle off, but at the same time, you don't see a lot of, you know, you're not gonna push everything out. And then we redraw some of these materials here, like so, one, two, three. This one stays, and then we add another marble to this spot right here. Okay, then whoever is ahead on this track, in this case it's me, will be the first player, and then that will be it. Now, one thing you didn't see here is if we were to unlock one of these scoring tiles of the, the Vizier's Wishes, which happens in rounds two, four, and then finally at the end of the game, we would score everything that's in the tower categorically based on one point per and then the last one is two point per so that's how you score a bunch of stuff with regards to what you built but that is it that's the kind of the whole game one thing you didn't see me demonstrate i did consolidate but i didn't do any of the ex um the uh, actual export actions but you get the pull i think you get the definite feel of how this game plays and it's a good demonstration so let me tell you what i think of it Okay, there you have it. That is Sabika played solo. Let me tell you, this is a great, great Euro game. From a solo standpoint, it's easy to execute. From a strategy standpoint, there's so much there that if you like Euro games, you're going to really like this one. The Rondell action, which I could take or leave Rondells, to be honest. They don't usually make or break a game for me. But in this game, it works so well because it's so tight on the money that having to pay to get where you want to go and to do what you want to do and having that limited situation with the categories for your workers is just really, really good in this case because it puts the angst in the game. And angst in a Euro for me is what I'm looking for. I'm looking for those decisions where they help me perspire. My brain starts to ooze out my ears as I try to think, I want to get that because... 
I need to get more in that scoring category, but to do that, it's going to cost this, and then there's these things that are coming up, and that's why I say this game is not really a point salad, because there is a strategic look going out. The goals and what you do and how you set yourself up is really strong in this game. It's not just like they do a little bit of this, they get some points, do a little of this, they get some points. You do get more points for putting more materials into your efforts, which can help you score big. But it's not, I, I just don't think it's one of those things where I can just dabble all over the place and see how it goes. Not at all. So the AI is very competitive. Yusuf beat me by six points um, at the end of the game that I, I was uh, taping for you or showing you. Um, and, you know, I thought that it was very easy for him to both block me, take my stuff away. In fact, in the last turn, he took away the exact uh, minor building that I really wanted that would have, I don't know if it would have, yeah, it may have tipped the balance because it would have allowed me to get some synergy. And with that synergy, then I could have taken a bonus action and the bonus action could have put me further on the export, etc., etc. turning the gears, making those linkages and helping me score some big points. And he blocked me from it, took that card away. So I really like this one, and it wasn't on my radar until pretty recently. Some of the comments that I got from some of you users clued me in on it, and I kind of saw it a little bit, and then I'm like, ah, oh, I'm just going to ignore it. I've got a lot of things that are going on, but people's comments and things like that kept me coming back to it, and I'm really glad I did. So thanks again for your comments. I always read them and always appreciate what you're saying, and you guys have been very, very respectful and helpful for me and very supportive. So thanks. Again, I love this game, but you know me. I also love Euros, and this is definitely a heavier Euro of a game. This will melt down somebody who has a lot of AP uh, going on in their brain. So be careful of that. There is definitely some analysis paralysis here because there's a lot to consider throughout the whole game. So if you're really prone to that, you don't like that kind of thing, and you don't like the heavy grinding of the gears, this may not be the game for you from a Euro standpoint. But if you do, like me, then this is a great addition to uh, the you know your your collection, and I think that the thing that really makes this stand out again is all the different variety in the major and minor poems, in the export mechanism, and what you're trying to do. I find actually probably the least interesting thing is the major construction because that's kind of like oh okay I get a little bonus, I do this. but that doesn't seem to me to be nearly as exciting as trying to put together and craft my strategies with the other things. Um, and even the minor constructions, getting that synergy together, that architectural synergy or the architectural balance, not synergy balance, it unlocks a big bonus action. So that's really cool. So again, I, I just think there's so much to love here. Uh, so many good choices to make in this game and some really solid play. So thanks again for watching. I really appreciate it. And whatever you decide to play in the future, as usual, I hope you have a fantastic time doing it. Take it easy, everybody.